everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my guide on how to install mods for the Elder Scrolls Oblivion using Mod Organizer. Welcome to another episode of the Oblivion for Mod Organizer tutorial series. In today's episode, we are going to be dealing with bug fixes, performance, and stability, as well as some troubleshooting for some common crashes and issues. If you have not watched the first episode in this series, go ahead and do that now. It is extremely vital, and you will probably not be able to rough your way through getting all of the workarounds set up, so just go ahead and watch that video and then come back to this one. With that out of the way, we can begin by first doing a little bit of housekeeping based off some of the stuff we installed in the previous episode. As you may recall, last time we installed, installed two test mods, alternate start arrive by ship, and OBSE tester. We're going to leave arrive by ship installed because it's a great mod and I planned on including it in this guide anyway, however we're going to uncheck the OBSE tester because we really don't want to have that run every single time we launch the game. I'm not going to completely uninstall this mod however because, well, it's mod organizer, there's no reason to do that, and it's nice to be able to just check off a box and then double check if our script extender has been loading correctly. This is especially true when we're doing some troubleshooting later on for the better faces video. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and address a crash that could come up at any point in this guide, and I figured I'd nip it in the bud right now by mentioning how to fix it. Essentially, if you're installing a mod, for example, say, Better City, you installed the mod, it worked, you were able to play around with Better Cities, and you decided you didn't like it, so you uninstalled Better Cities. Now, every time you try and launch the game, it crashes, and you're not sure why. This has to do with your OBSE plugins and the fact that they don't work too well with Mod Organizer. Head over to your Steam, Steam Apps Common Oblivion folder, go inside your Data folder, OBSE folder, and Plugins folder. From here we'll see some of the common OBSE plugins that we'll have installed. However, you may also have a hook.dll and an mo underscore path.txt. Select those two files, the hook file and the path file, and delete them. By deleting those two files, you'll be able to launch the game again and continue modding, so if you're ever getting a crash, this is a good place to check it out. This wouldn't be a Bethesda game without an annoying stutter that occurs while you're playing. In order to fix this, we're going to be using the Oblivion Stutter Remover. To download this, head over to the link in the description of this video and go to the file section of the Oblivion Stutter Remover mod. From there, you are going to go to OSR underscore 4-1-37 or the latest version of the Stutter Remover and you are going to download it manually. I would also recommend that you go over to the Oblivion Step Guide, which I've linked in the description by user Hishhutup, or however I'm supposed to say it, because he has some pretty cool changes to the INI that he recommends. You can go ahead and use these if we want. I'm going to go ahead and put them in just to show you how to do it. But first, we're gonna to need to actually install the Oblivion Stutter Remover. Once the Oblivion Stutter Remover has been downloaded, extract it using an archiving tool like WinRAR or 7-Zip and then open it up. From here, you'll see a data OBSE and then plugins folder that has an INI and a DLL in it. Right click on the INI and click edit with notepad or you can edit it with notepad++ which is going to be my personal recommendation. From here make sure that you open up your step guide which you can see I have on the right hand side of my screen. As we can see he does recommend a couple of changes. B manage FPS should be set to 0. Replace heap should be equal to 1. So we'll set that to 0 and then we'll find replace heap which is right here. Set it to 1. It's also going to recommend that you change fast exit to 0 although your results may vary on this one. Now remember if none of this works for you or if you are experiencing problems, please do not have us hesitate to uninstall this and then add the original vanilla INI because this may cause problems for you. Now that the INI file has been settled, make sure that you open up your Oblivion folder. This is located in Steam Steam Apps Common Oblivion. It's the one that we previously have been using. Go inside your data folder, inside your OBSE folder, and then inside your plugins folder. Once you're there, take the stutter remover and the stutter remover INI, drag and drop. We have successfully installed the stutter remover. While we're in the middle of installing OBSE plugins, another great one I would recommend is the OBSE Ellis Universal Silent Voice. Head over to the file section of this mods page, and then once again, since this is an OBSE plugin, you're going to download the latest version of this file, which is version 93, manually. Drag the Silent Voice file to your desktop and extract it using an archiving tool like WinRAR or 7-Zip, and then open it up. Inside, you'll have a DLL, an LIP, and an MP3, as well as a TXT. Basically, what you're going to do is select everything but the TXT file, which is the one that opens with Notepad, drag these and drop them in your OBSE 
OBSC plugins folder that we were just in to install the stutter remover. Remember that if you have that hook file and the mod organizer file here, it may result in a crash to desktop, so just be aware of that. The next thing we're going to do is ensure that Oblivion is running 4GB enabled. Doing this is very simple by using the 4GB patch tool by NT Core. Head over to the link in the description and click on the download the 4GB patch button. You will download a zip file which you will then extract using an archiving tool like WinZip or 7RAR. Open it up. Once you've opened this up, select the file that's inside and select copy and then open up your Oblivion directory. This is located most commonly in Steam Steam Apps Common Oblivion. From here, paste the 4GB patch which will then paste into this folder and then double click it to run. From here, you will see a list of a bunch of files. What you're going to be looking for is oblivion.exe. If you don't see the .exe, it's just the Oblivion application file here. You can click on my video to see how to show those extensions. Click the open button and it will add, it will tell you that the file has been successfully patched, which means we're good to go and we can minimize these folders and we can go ahead and delete the 4 gigabyte patch because we don't need it anymore. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is edit the Oblivion Any. We're going to be using the step guide once again for this one, so I'll open that up. There'll be a link in the description. In order to edit the Oblivion Any with Mod Organizer, what you're going to need to do is click on this puzzle piece button until it drops down and then click on the Any Editor button. Remember that there's no prefs any, there's just an Oblivion Any, so there's nothing to worry about there. All right, in order to get all of our files from here over to here, what you're going to need to do is follow these steps. The first thing you're going to do is highlight the first entry here right before the equal sign and hit Control C to copy or you can right hit click and hit copy. Click anywhere inside your any files section, hit Control F to open up the find menu and then click Control V to paste. Hit the find next button and then close it and it will highlight that entry. After that it's going to tell you to change this to zero. Now I already have it changed to zero so make sure that it says zero. For the next line you're going to do the same thing so highlight this, copy, Control F, Highlight here, Control V, click Next, close, and as you can see, I have this set to zero because I do plan on installing the Oblivion character overhaul. If you would like to play in the meantime, set this to one, although you may have to come back here and change it on your own if I fail to mention it in the next episode. After that, we're going to change the UGID tree distance, so we're going to hit Control F. We're going to paste that in, click Find Next and Close. You get Tree Distant Range, we're going to set that to 30. And then right below that, U Grid Distant Count, we're going to set that to 50. After that, we're going to move on to U Interior Cell Buffer, which is the next line in the INI, and I guess you probably know what to do. This is pretty much what the guide is going to be from now on. Now, you don't necessarily need to mess with your U-Grids, although they are recommended by this guide, so I'm going to be following them. Remember that if you do have problems with this, you can always just revert to the vanilla any by deleting the any file inside your Oblivion folder and then relaunching the game, which will regenerate the any. Although keep in mind that you actually need to get the mod organizer version of the any. And I'll show you where that is right now. So you open up your Oblivion folder, you go to Mod Organizer, you go to Profiles, you select the profile that you're currently on, and here you will see the Oblivion.ini, which all you need to do is delete or just copy it from your default profile if you have it like something like that, and you can revert it to normal. You may notice these movie ones have you leave them blank, that's just so that you can get the intro movies out of the way so your game will launch faster. Once you finish moving over all of those any files, you can go ahead and click the save button and then I will just go ahead and close out of this and I'm just going to move my mod organizer back on the screen. And that's pretty much it. We've done the basic level of tweaks. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and look at the UI. Later on, I'm going to do that performance episode that I promised you. But until the next time, thank you very much for watching. Please consider checking out some of my other videos. I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you hit that like button or that dislike button or whatever, it would keep me motivated to continue creating this series. Because honestly, thank you very much for watching. I've been Zul, and I hope that you have an excellent day. And here's some music. Yeah.